Ah, isn't it exciting? I love this, this uh, high holy holiday of Halloween. But perhaps you might like to know how the tradition of trick-or-treating started. That's what we will get into in just a moment. First, let us pray. Lord God, you have been gracious with how you have moved within our midst in this service. Would you please move your spirit into the words about to be spoken and heard, into that which will be thought and felt, so that in all ways we honor the living Christ in our midst. Amen. There once was a man named Stingy Jack. He was a notorious trickster, and he also liked his Irish whiskey. And once upon a time, he played a trick on the devil and trapped Satan. And the only way the devil could get out was by agreeing, A, never to tempt Jack again, and B, not to take Jack's soul when he died. Several years later, Jack did die, but St. Peter would not let him into heaven because he'd been a scoundrel. And Satan would not let him into the underworld because of the pact he had made. But what will I do? Where will I go? He asked. Go back to where you came from, said Satan. But it's dark and it's windy. So Jack begged and pleaded with the devil to give him some light. Grudgingly, the devil took a flaming ember from the fires of hell and threw it on Jack. It's windy, so how are you going to keep it lit? Jack was eating a turnip, and so he howled out the, the, the turnip, put the candle or the ember in the turnip to try to keep the flame going that way. And thus, with that eerie light, Jack made his way slowly back to eternally haunt the land of the living. Now, in the early 1800s, when the Irish uh, immigrated to our country because of the potato famine, they took with them this story. They quickly discovered that a pumpkin is much better for keeping the ember lit than a turnip. And they also discovered that on a pumpkin, you could carve out Jack's scary face. Hence, this tradition of having a lit Jack O'Lantern. So, when you go out trick-or-treating tonight, remember, you are old Jack, stingy Jack, in costume, in a scary costume, you are going to knock on the door and you're going to say, trick, or give me three musketeers, Reese's peanut butter cups, Snickers, or any of the other bottles. <laughs> it's a dentist's dream, believe me, right? Trick or treat as you carry old Jack's lantern with you. Hence how trick or treating began. Don't you just love those scary stories? I like scary stories. I love scary stories. But did you know that the Irish are not the only ones who have the tradition of scary stories? The Hebrews do as well. Why, did you know that in the Bible there are some really scary stories? There's a story, for example, of a witch and a ghost. Don't look over there, look at me. A witch <laughs> and a ghost. It's a time when King Saul was concerned about a battle the next day, so he goes to a witch to consult a spirit to see what the outcome of the battle would be. Listen. King Saul then said to his attendants, <laughs> Find me a woman who is a medium, so I may go and inquire of her. There is one in Endor, they said. So Saul disguised himself putting on other clothes, and at night he and two men went to the woman. Consult a spirit for me, he said, and bring up for me one whom I name. Then the woman asked, whom shall I bring up for you? Bring up Samuel, he said. The woman said, 
I see a spirit coming up out of the ground. What does he look like, he asked. An old man wearing a robe is coming up. Then Saul knew it was Samuel, and he bowed down and prostrated himself with his face to the ground. Samuel said to Saul, Why have you disturbed me by bringing me up? Did you know that there's a story about a ghost that appears in the dead of the night? The story that one of Job's friends told him. Listen. A word was secretly brought to me. My ears caught a whisper of it amid disquieting dreams in the night when deep sleep falls on men. Fear and trembling seized me and made all my bones shake. A spirit glided past my face, and the hair on my body stood on end. It stopped, but I could not tell what it was. A form stood before my eyes. Did you know that the Bible has one of the most terrifying visions of all time? It happened when King Belshazzar from Babylon, an evil king, was trying to mock God. So he had all the utensils that had been taken from the fallen Jewish temple in Jerusalem, all those utensils from the uh, forsaken country, the devastated country, and he was going to use these utensils, dishes, and etc., for a wild party he was going to throw for his wives and concubines. But he discovered that it is not wise to mock God. Under the influence of the wine, Belshazzar commanded that they bring in the vessels of gold and silver that his father Nebuchadnezzar had taken out of the temple in Jerusalem so that the king and his lords, his wives and his concubines might drink from them. They drank the wine and praised the gods of gold and silver, bronze, iron, wood, and stone. Immediately, the fingers of a human hand appeared and began writing on the plaster of the wall of the royal palace next to the lampstand. Then the king's face turned pale. He watched the hand as it wrote, and his thoughts terrified him. His limbs gave way and his knees knocked together. Boo! <laughs> this is scary stuff. What makes it scary? It makes it scary because these are events that are unexpected, unexplainable, and uncontrollable. And that's what makes anything scary when you get right down to it. It's like what I feel when I hear the reports that bombs were found in cargo planes from Yemen bound for our country. And I realize that at any moment, life can change in our land and make 9-11 look pale in comparison. And when I think about that, my knees knock together. Or when I hear some political advertisements, not that I've heard any political advertisement lately, but it's advertisements that fractionalize and factionalize and pit us against them. And suddenly we are a divided society